was the last time you used voice search for something? My guess is it was probably in the last 24 hours. Even just this morning, I was using Alexa to create dance music for my son who likes to dance around the kitchen before we go to nursery of a morning. But voice has integrated into our lives in a very simplistic way, whether you've got an Alexa, whether it's on your Apple Watch, it's actually seen phenomenal growth. But in terms of voice, there are still a lot of organizations not tapping into the potential. And although vo voice might be seen as something you should be looking at in the future, it is very much not the case. So I'm joined by James today um, to talk about voice. And the reason I've invited him on is for two reasons. First of all, he's worked in voice for a long time. So who else better to have? Um, secondly, he's done voice at Lego. So he's had hands-on experience. He's the founder of Voice2 for a UK leading voice search community. And he's also the director of planning for ModDef, the voice summit in the US. The second reason is he's just released a report on UK data around voice. So I'm sure you'll agree, he's the best person that we need to be talking to. And as you know, on our podcast, we love to bring value and insights to you. So I'm joined by James today. It's great to have you on, James, and thank you so much for sparing some of your valuable time. No worries at all. Thanks, uh, Lindsay. Nice to be here. Yeah, it's uh, great to have an opportunity to talk about kind of where this market is going, as I'm sure for many people who've been living with various restrictions around the world under COVID, uh, wherever you're living, um, you know, we've all seen that this technology has become more essential to us than ever before, particularly because we're looking for things that we can do without touching other things uh, more often than not. And so voice has definitely become really in focus in the past uh, six months. So yeah, look forward to discussing it with you. Yeah, absolutely. And whether it's, you know, we're not just talking about digital things. I mean, digital touches so many things. So digital isn't just a mobile phone or a watch, it's in our cars. There are so many voice activated things. Even in our email, I can go into Microsoft now and hit voice and dictate my emails rather than search. So why should organizations be considering voice search and how are they best to go about it, James? That's quite a big question, but let's just start yeah, there as yeah, a start sure. of a 10. Well, maybe we just start with a little bit about where voice is at the moment and particularly, um, you know, for many people listening, if you're in the UK, um, you might be seeing that voice technology has become much more available and prevalent in this past 18 months in particular, as new devices have become much more available here in Europe um, than in the US. But on a global basis, we've seen voice technology been doubling at a rate of knots uh, over the past 24 to 36 months, really, predominantly catalyzed by devices devices like smart speakers from Amazon, like the Amazon Echo devices, the Google Assistant devices as well. And on mobile, people are using voice search, particularly on Android and in Siri uh, increasingly. But it's nothing new. I mean, voice has been around for a long, long time, as you would you know, know that the iPhone's now in its 12th iteration. Um, and Siri has been around for nearly a decade in our voice uh, you know, kind of landscape. And so we're, we're really used to using voice technology to get things done. But it's become much smarter, much more connected, and much more prevalent in many different types of devices and you mentioned yourself in our cars in our headphones uh, mounted onto our you know, heads up displays in our cars mounted into our fridges <laughs> and everywhere else um, as you know we've seen more and more device manufacturers embedding microphones and wireless technology into all sorts of household appliances and because of that we're adopting it more and more and as i said we found in the most recent research that we've just released from vixen labs which is our consultancy and design studio that focuses on voice um, we launched something called the voice commerce report in october 2020 which was a uk study looking at a thousand respondents in the uk and asking them how are they using voice not just to get information but also how to get things done and how to actually complete commercial tasks uh, you know, kind of make the wheels of commerce move, if you like. And we found that 40% of UK users are now actually using voice to buy things in their own homes. Um, but much more than that, they're looking for information about brands and businesses. And for many people, I'm sure, uh, regular listeners to the podcast and watching it on YouTube will be thinking, well, I've got a brand or a business and do I know 
what uh, result might come out if I was to go and ask Alexa or Google about my device, uh, you know, on, on my device about my brand. And, and more often than not, when we speak to clients and business partners, we find that the answer is they don't have any clue about what people might be saying um, to their devices, and they don't know what these devices are saying back. And that presents a big challenge and a huge opportunity for us to work with people to get this stuff really um, delivering value for their businesses as more and more people begin to engage with it. Mm. And that's, um, well, that leads me to, to two questions, really. First of all, I had a look at your report and I was blown away by how many people are actually purchasing. I guess I shouldn't yeah. be surprised because the way voices come about, even if I just wear my own shoes, I know both of us had children and the first one of the first bits of kit my my husband bought me was this watch because when your hands are full you can't do stuff so actually if i can just talk to talk to my my watch and get it to do stuff you know send my husband a message or it's just it's a it's a way to make my life easier and i think that's the key thing with voice isn't it? it's about making our lives easier it's not trying to put a hurdle in the way so that was my first observation and then linking to actually people using it to purchase yeah my second my yeah. second point is around the point you just made at the end in terms of like if people want to know most businesses are pretty well versed in in knowing how to find and know what our audiences are searching for online but is there a way people can find out what they're searching for in terms of a voice way or is should they just use the normal ways we use in our normal digital assets to find out yeah, that's a great question. I'll tackle, tackle that one first. So yeah, one of the things that we really use as the bedrock is our traditional search information. So people are familiar with things like the Google um, Keyword Planner tool and things like that. But what we're looking for is not those single phrases, those individual keywords that we're optimizing. What we're looking for is the questions. And this is why voice differs quite drastically from traditional text-based search for a couple of reasons. When you're asking something out loud to your device like Alexa or Google Assistant, you're using natural language to ask those questions. You'll ask actual questions. You'll say, who is the president? <laughs> that yeah. might be a difficult one to answer right now. Uh, <laughs> you, might, you might be asking, um, what, where's my nearest McDonald's? You might be saying, um, what's the best credit card for me? We ask full questions when we speak to these devices because it's weird for us to just shout out individual keywords at these things um, across a room. It's just not natural as a human behavior. And so when we're looking at working out what people are saying, we start from the keywords. We know the language that people use that are associated with our brand, particularly branded searches, but also non-branded search terms. But then what we have to do is expand out from that to look at the actually question structures, the way in which we ask queries to these devices. And then when you begin to look at that, you'll see different types of results come back from when a question is asked to when just a keyword is slammed in. And remember that when we're using a visual device like a phone or a, a tablet or a computer to create a search, we're also relying upon a lot of visual prompts, things like autocomplete, um, you know, bookmarks, history, previously visited pages. None of these things exist when we're in voice. And so when we're talking to people about what are they trying to optimize for, what you're trying to do for any voice query, any question about your brand or business, is trying to rank for not just the 10 blue links of a search engine result, but what we call position zero. It's the, the position above those 10 links, which is the only thing that Google or Alexa will read out as the answer. And because often for many people, whilst there are more and more people buying uh, visual devices like the Google Nest Hubs, for example, the Amazon Echo uh, shows, those watching on YouTube can probably see one somewhere back there in my, my uh, office here. Th those devices obviously have some visual feedback, but that's about 20% of the smart speaker market out there today. Most people, and obviously particularly if you're in a car or using headphones, aren't going to have a visual prompt. And so we have to know what questions people are asking. We have to optimize content, applications, video content, audio content, and obviously search results to rank for that position zero. Um, and if you can do that, that's a really powerful place to be because there's no one competing. There's no advertising at present in any of these platforms. Um, it's something that has to be naturally worked for with high quality, um, well positioned content. And that's a, a massive opportunity for brands. And you know, that's, that's across the board, but we do see, as you said, certain segments pushing voice forward when it comes to commerce more than others and the big one is parents and families some of this has been 
catalyzed by the, the lockdown, people looking for things to keep kids occupied with um, <laughs> when they're probably not at school um, or when they're at home more often, or you know, we're all just trying to get through the day, <laughs> getting things done. Um, and so we're trying to automate tasks. We're trying to take those habits and routines, those things that we all have to deal with every day and make them easier or augment them in some way that doesn't necessarily involve another screen giving a you know shoving an ipad in front of a four-year-old i've done it plenty of times myself yeah. um, but, and, and we all feel a bit guilty about it uh, and i think we can all let ourselves off the hook a little bit at the moment but you know there comes a point where we want to help them do other things and audio content is proven to not have that same kind of addictive qualities that screen de devices do it improves language cognition listening and speech and all of those things are seen as very positive by parents so i think there's definitely something there that is helping push that forward um, but increasingly we also see that parents are just trying to get stuff done they've got a lot of commitments and um, they're looking for you know quick answers to things you know what's the best brand of floor cleaner that i can buy how should i rearrange my dishwasher so that my you know my glasses come out without stains on them and streaks these are the types of things that big brands um, have the opportunity to provide really helpful useful information and utilities for content for um, and many of them aren't yet taking up the opportunity to do so. So that's where we think that 2021 is going to become a big year for people beginning to really press into voice search and answering those search queries with content, with, with web results and with applications uh, that can help them solve those problems. Yeah, and I think you've made, well, there's too many points there to, to list them out. Obviously, people are going to listen and watch this anyway, but there's so many points you've just shared with people. I guess the most important one is, unlike our desktops or our mobile phone, there is no scroll down. It is, you get the answer because you want to get the job done. So you have to be at the top. There is no, Alexa, can you give me the second answer? I doubt anybody's suggested that. <laughs> they might have asked the question in a different way if they weren't happy with the answer, but generally it is around... I want the answer so here's the question and I think this also highlights the fact that any channel that you work on you have to adapt to that channel so over the last couple of years you know even just going from laptops or you know desktops to mobile phone we know that people on their laptops might type a, a longer question where on our mobile phones it's like McDonald's near me or just typing in McDonald's because we know it's going to search near me where this is we know content, well, I know content marketing is important and, and so does probably everyone else listen, listening or watching today. But this is just taking it up another notch in terms of why content marketing is absolutely important. Because like you've said, I don't go, Alexa, McDonald's near me. You're going to ask Alexa or Siri or any other of the voice platforms that you're using a question, aren't you? Because yeah. that's what you're doing. It's just like talking to a person. Exactly. And, and these experiences are designed to be conversational. If you think, uh, if you go look into this, uh, if, if you're another agency partner, for example, listening to the show, um, you, know, you can go look at the Amazon Alexa agency curriculum that will give you some ideas about where to get started. It's something that we at Vixen Labs have been contributing to for the past couple of years with case studies and, and ideas around voice marketing, because content you know, is the thing that most of these assistants are looking for. Um, and that's the first thing they're looking for. But if you want to provide something that's more immersive, we do have that opportunity to build applications in this space as well. So many people I'm sure will have heard about things like Alexa Skills or Google Assistant Actions. These you know, opportunities to build immersive and interactive experiences to help people get jobs done. And that might be helping people with notifications and reminders or timers, those features that we're all used to or creating a more immersive uh, dialogue. Just to kind of give one example, we built something earlier this year for a brand called Lysol in the US, which some people listening might know of because Donald Trump was recommending that you go and inject it into yourself to try and cure coronavirus earlier this year. Uh, when we built this before, uh, <laughs> was before COVID and we didn't know that, but one of the things we knew that people were looking for in the last cold and flu season of, of 2019 going into 2020 was, you know, is there cold and flu in my area before COVID became a problem? And people were naturally asking these questions to devices like Alexa. So we built something for the Lysol brand that answered that question. We took the data from WebMD results on how many people in a certain zip code were looking for uh, cold and flu uh, symptoms and then match that up with where people were asking those questions from and, and were able to tell them uh, is there a lot of cold and flu in your area and then help them with things like you know before we were all carrying around hand sanitizer in our back pocket uh, you know 
disinfect their their surfaces or clean their hands more regularly or provide a, a, a routine for kids to wash their hands to before this was something that we were really thinking about singing happy birthday twice or you know doing it for 20 seconds and it's those types of um, applications where you can go beyond just a search result and do something more immersive but whatever the content is um, our big opportunity in voice is to be helpful. That's the thrust of what the assistant is there for and what uh, Alexa is there for. That's what the, the algorithms that power those devices are looking for is the most helpful answer to something. Not always the funniest, not always the most viral, um, but the, the thing that is the most helpful. So I think if you're thinking about getting into voice, it's not about uh, replicating everything that exists on your website. It's not about recreating every function that your mobile app did. Because if you're a bank and tried to do that, you know, trying to get someone to pay a bill over 14 steps and reading out sort code numbers is be pretty painful. But if say you've got some checking your bank balance, that's something that people do every day or at least very frequently. So looking for those little moments in people's routines and your brand and businesses, your customers' routines that can be replicated every day, those are the types of pieces that work really well in voice for applications or in, in the case of content, because you're trying to be helpful. Uh, and that's really what is powering a lot of uh, the voice experiences that we see being successful today. Mm. And I think that's a really powerful statement because again, like businesses are thinking, how can I generate more business? And if anyone's listened or watched any of our webinars, we talk about content marketing and how important it is. And it's not about selling, it's providing value or being helpful in your case. And that is super important. If you're helpful, people will naturally buy from you because you give the answer to the question or you help them in their day. And along the lines of you talked about moments, no doubt everyone's familiar with micro moments. You know, Google's like, I want to do, I want to go, I want to see, I want to know. And obviously at the, then linking in the, the other framework that I often talk about in training is see, think, do, care. Too many organizations are focused on the do. I want to buy something today. Well, how many of us, and I always use the nappy example. So just to talk about the nappy example very quickly, just again, to put my own shoes on. When I first had my little boy, I like went to the shops. I had no idea what I was doing. I'd literally just Google all the answers. And I'd, um, <laughs> I literally went to the supermarket, bought Pampers, because that's the brand that everyone talks about. Um, and then within the first week, I l went to my bin. I was like, oh my goodness, this child has generated so much rubbish. And I'm not some sort of eco yeah. warrior, but I was like, that's a problem. I cannot have that. He's going to be the most <laughs> uneco friendly child on the planet. But I didn't know when the, what other options were available. So what did I do? Turned online and started to carry out research. And then I found out that there's eco friendly nappies. And so it's about, I wouldn't have found that out had, had I not gone online, but I wasn't, that's I didn't right. know the answer. But it's no good some eco nappy company thinking well she'll look for eco nappies because i had no idea i was no. in the c phase i was in i'm your target exactly. audience give me value i will then find you and if i'm happy with the product i'll purchase it and that's i think where voice search in terms of getting things done but then actually the commercial side of yeah. it can can join together isn't it and, and this is why we see parents being the leaders in this space, right? Because when parents are busy, you know, yes, okay, before you had an Alexa or before you had a um, you know, kind of voice search on your phone, you would have had to go fire up the laptop or go grab an iPad or you know, do that what, you know, naturally. Now, if you are like, oh, I'm running out of nappies, what are you going to do? You're just going to say Alexa, order nappies. Now, sorry for everyone that's listening that's just had to do that. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's, that's what we do. And what gets really powerful, of course, and is also potentially a threat to competition Competitors, if you've been buying, you know, natty nappies as eco nappy warrior, yeah, well you know, kind of <laughs> mum number two, um, you know, that's going to be in your search history. That's going to be in your basket from previously on Amazon. And so now to compete against that same search result in the future for Pampers or for Huggies or somebody else, that's suddenly a lot harder because you know the the, the algorithm is going to default back to wanting to give you that same choice again. And that's why this position zero thing is something that we should be you know, helping our brands really fight for because once you're in there getting somebody else in there again and helping you switch that choice becomes incredibly more difficult um and we know that people are you know, as you say researching and finding out you know kind of information about brands so again back from our our voice commerce report we found that 70 percent of uk consumers are searching for specific information about brands and businesses so that could be everything from the opening hours like i use the mcdonald's example of your local mcdonald's again through to um you know is can i recycle um the, my nespresso capsules for example or you know, what how often shall i be watering the, the plant that i just bought from 
patch or you know kind of how do i put together this ikea furniture like those types of queries are what people are asking their devices on a really regular basis and there's only a couple of options there you know of what you're going to get back you're either going to get somebody else's content that answers that question a competitor that's fighting for that position themselves or your official answer and i think most brand owners would want that latter <laughs> option to be the result that comes about but many people aren't yet really digging into making that happen so i think that's yeah. where we, we really see people needing to focus in the next 12 months Absolutely. And just sorry to talk about nappies on our podcast video today, but it's a real example. And, and whenever I talk about it, people go, wow, yeah. And just talk about that example, Natalie nappies and all the other eco nappies, none of them are there to be seen. Like I ended up on a forum, which it's someone else giving that answer, but you should be controlling right. that space. Um, Absolutely. Because if not, you know, it's not going to take long before a competitor does. And we're seeing lots of disruption in the market where brands have been around for years and years it doesn't it doesn't take a lot to set up a business today so you know an eco nappy no. company that is savvy that sets up some startup cover all the content they can be taking your business away very yeah. quickly can't they so you absolutely, absolutely. Need to focus on content and, and you know lizzie people ask us a lot at the moment like well is it is it really happening now like is this something i really need to do now and i think that you know it, i've seen i've this is like the kind of third major technology revolution that i've worked through in my career the first being social the second being mobile and now voice and we've seen it happen time and time again i would put voice now at the current state of where social was probably 12 months into uh pages launching on facebook or official brand accounts happening on twitter and people were like well maybe it's something but who's going to buy something on facebook um yeah who's got who's going to care about what my brand says on twitter and fast forwards and we've seen the power that those things can can have and the same thing was said of search results originally well you know why does it matter people know my brand they'll go to my website well no they won't and we all now know how important search ranking is and we know that the longer it goes on without you doing something about it the harder and harder it is to recover that ground so the early adopter really does have the power to win here and as i say the market is actually even more competitive because you don't get to see all of those options because it's not a good consumer experience no one wants to have 10 things read out to them and try and remember the best one you want the answer you ask a question you expect the answer and that that's what we're, we're dealing with when it comes to, to voice so i think that th this kind of knowledge exchange thing that's that's the primary use case that there are many others from you know kind of we're seeing from our research people controlling their media um you know finding music to listen to obviously is a huge opportunity people controlling their devices like we saw four in ten people are already using voice to control their tv for example which if you're working in media and entertainment is a huge you know opportunity and also a big barrier because if you've got a great sh you know if everyone knows when game of thrones is happening you know to ask your apple tv for game of thrones uh, not anymore sadly but you know uh, people know when that's on yeah. if you're a small show or a competing news out there do people know to ask you because if you're on these devices with only the voice then the role of the you know, kind of program guide or the, or the reviewer you know becomes diminished slightly it, we've driven more and more by recommendation as we're already seeing from things like netflix and and apple tv as i say you know very much now being driven by siri as, as apple begins to use the home pod as a control device that's just coming in uh, to you know many more homes now with the, with the new home pod mini being much cheaper so i think we're going to see that voice isn't just going to be something that only affects people buying consumer goods the nappy example but actually all sorts of content being consumed um, as well as also service businesses yeah you know, like i say if you've got to find yeah if, if you know the name of your local bakery then maybe you'll ask what time they're open till but you're much more likely to say find a bakery near me yeah. and you know greg's is probably going to be fighting pretty hard for that search result on your local high street probably with much more budget than your local bakery is yeah. and so you know these will all become challenges i think we will have to deal with um for the future yeah or even just as the bakery example like where can i get the best cinnamon bun in norwich which is where i live for example like people are going to want something and think where can i get that aren't they it's not about yeah. knowing where they can get it and i think this highlights Sorry. two things i've got like two questions wearing the listeners today's shoes first of all is um how that it's highly personalized like all these examples are highly highly personalized so you need to really think like every individual customer which is quite a big task in itself but how can you 
bond those together that's my first all thinking and the yeah. second thing is more of a question of okay james so i know if i go to google analytics it will tell me where my traffic has come from so i then know that i can you know allocate return on investment how do people do that in search voice search yeah, so I, I think on the, the analyzing the traffic right now, we still don't have a lot of tools to see whether or not the search results that are hitting your page are actually coming from a voice device or not. You can begin to look at the keywords. And, and like I say, if you're seeing kind of long tail keyword question based keywords that are driving those search results, then that's an indication that's still going to be the minority for most people. Um, but increasingly, we're going to see that come on stream and more and more of those questions and more tools being built every day by all of the big search providers to help us try and analyze this kind of data so i think that that is something that we're gonna you know kind of deal with um with over time and it, of course that you know when you then think about you know where does the future kind of go with all of this um i think it's that we're not seeing that necessarily you know, screens aren't going away right yeah getting your content optimized on screen and on mobile is by far and away still a, a huge um imperative uh, and important role to play um but what we're going to see is that voice will begin to be the the augmenting way that we get things done throughout the day um particularly i'm particularly bullish on the car and on on headphones because i think that actually has the potential to revolutionize outdoor advertising quite frankly yeah. you know when you've got the if i'm driving to norwich at some point or other in the next few weeks or months um, if we're ever allowed outside again <laughs> um you know if i if i'm driving up the a12 and i see a big uh, you know kind of banner ad over the top of the motorway that says you know pre-order your kfc at the next outlet by just asking alexa in my car i can do that hands-free i don't have you know i've got no other interruptions um you know i could be advertised additional special offers or other content in the car while i'm doing it at the same time the same thing that if i'm in the drive through you know at a mcdonald's or a costa or somewhere like that and i'm ordering you know why not be prompting me to listen to some special playlist or that what that i could be listening to in the car at the same time or if i'm going up the you know the escalator here in london on the tube and i'm seeing you know ads as I'm coming out of the tube station about where to go, I could be having Alexa prompt me the directions to you know the nearest top man or you know kind of the, the next boots out outlet store or something like that, just by being told, ask Alexa where the nearest boot store is near me and be directed. So these use cases will become more and more prevalent because as the adoption of the, the you know voice activated headphones and voice in the car becomes more and more common. Uh, we're going to start you know, using our voices everywhere to get things done. And we often say about smart speakers in the home, which obviously, you know, the primary place that many people are doing this, they're kind of like the training wheels for us to do it everywhere else. You know, once you start doing it regularly indoors, you get used to doing it more outdoors, certainly in the confines of your car, which is also a more private space anyway. Um, and then you begin to see all the different places that you might direct people to, to get this done. And I think that that's what's going to really change the way in which we use our, our voices to get things done as we go forward. Yeah, I think there's there are so many opportunities there. And it's like you say, it's I think it's a good analogy. Like we're so far behind, like we're at Facebook pages, but this is a huge opportunity. So people should be doing it now because if you do it now, then you're much more likely to get in that space and hold it where it becomes mainstream. You know, from Facebook, it's yeah. so hard to get any business on Facebook now because there's so much going on. Like yeah. be the be the one that's driving that opportunity. Do you yeah. think there's going to be much advertising coming from voice search? Do you think there'll be like sponsored posts and what what might that sound We're like? We're already not beginning like? to see <laughs> trials of things like that. Um, I think the thing that we have to you know anticipate is that of course these platforms are going to want to try and monetize these these results in some way. But at the same time, there are some natural barriers to doing so. Um, primarily because it really is an interruptive experience to be hearing an advert in the middle of an, an answer to a question that you've give, been given, particularly when it's being shouted out loud at you in your house or in your car. But there are ways of doing that. I think we already begin to see things like on Google Assistant, if you're using it on your phone, you'll often see suggestion chips. They're the little kind of um, little kind of bubble icons that are at the bottom. When you're making a search in the, in the Assistant on your phone, you might see another suggestion come up. And those are at the moment predominantly editorially curated by Google or are linked to the apps that you already have on your phone. And I think we'll see more of that type of activity, more onward suggestions. You'll hear an answer, 
that is probably whatever Google deems to be the right answer. And then maybe a suggestion of a, you know, a brand or business locally that might be able to help you with that or a brand or business that might be promoting, uh, you know, kind of an offer or something related to that. But I think what we really do see is that, you know, it's been several years in the making. Alexa hasn't just suddenly arrived on the scene. You know, we've been you know, using this now for, you know, coming up to its, you know, it's what just had its sixth birthday, you know, the 2014 in the US when it first launched. Um, we're six years into it and there's still no advertising. And I think the reason for that is that one is that for Alexa, certainly, you know, uh, Alexa is a gateway into the Amazon ecosystem and Amazon are doing pretty well, thank you very much, in most other places of taking your money. Yeah. Um, for Google, you know, it's all about knowledge and information management. And, and obviously their business is predominantly advertising driven. And I think that I'd still be more bullish on them being the ones that did something in that nature. But they've been very clear from the outset that the role of the assistant is to be as helpful as possible. So I think they have to devise an advertising model that sticks to that mantra. Otherwise, consumers will just start switching away from it in the same way that we've seen ad blockers come into places like Facebook and Instagram. So I think there's definitely opportunity, but it's not quite here yet. Yeah. And I think just adding that bit on Google, I'd agree. I mean, I'm lucky enough to, to train some of the largest Google's largest clients in the world. I work as a partner with Google and they're very much, you know, they understand whenever we're training some of their largest clients, it's the balance of commercial versus being right for the customer. Um, and they absolutely agree with that. But on the flip side of that, they make their money on sales as well. So even just Google shopping, it was free for a couple of years and suddenly, oh, you have to pay for it. Like they're a commercial business at the end of the day, but it'd be interesting how they, how they sort of get that in, but be valuable without switching people off because there is only that one answer when you don't want to disrupt. It's a bit like, you know, how many of us watch filtered television now? I mean, I never watch ads because I'm, you know, choosing what I want to watch and it really annoys me when there's an ad. But if the ad is relevant, is timely and it's you know really bespoke to me then I'm, then it is going to potentially convert me to do something so it'll be interesting i think to see how that that pans out yeah. one of the thing i wanted to pick up on when i read your report is um i guess i shouldn't be surprised by it especially because of covid so during covid lots of people have been forced online including the the older generation that perhaps wouldn't go online they've been forced to so it has in, as well as the internet usage going up 50 percent the the user age has gone up quite significantly as well um because people have been forced to and they're like oh this is actually quite a good experience but yeah. it's interesting to see the age of the the people that you had in your report i think it was like 12 percent was actually uh, the older generation which i would have expected rightly or wrongly would have been a smaller percentage do you think yeah. there's any rhyme or reason for that well, I think what we've seen, particularly at the start of the lockdown period, is a big rush of people buying um, voice devices, particularly smart speakers, for their grandparents and great grandparents. Um, my own grandmother, she's 92. She's got an Echo show with a camera in it in her living room, which I installed for her back in February. And throughout the lockdown, we've been using it to do video calls with her while she's been isolating. And I, I met, heard countless stories of other people doing similar things. And particularly because the onboarding for um, those who are maybe less tech literate, regardless of their age, um, is that these devices are probably the, the easiest thing to get them to know how to use. There's no clicking around, there's no visual interface in most cases for them to deal with. Um, and obviously if you then begin to pair those with kind of you know, smart camera um, solutions, um, then you know it makes life a lot easier. What I think we were intrigued by from our data in, in the report was that actually it wasn't just that they owned these devices, but they were really also very open to using them for many use cases that we saw for others. Obviously, music, you know, IoT control, TV controls, things like that across the board was great. But actually, even things like food delivery, um, you know, that was still by far and away the most uh, likely thing that those in the 65 plus age bracket were going to do if they were going to buy something. So they're less likely to buy um, you know, products or you know, order um, you know, shopping or things like that from it. But ordering food delivery seemed like a, lot, a, a very openness uh, to doing that. So yeah, I think that we definitely are seeing that that's trending up. And obviously, as you know, the years go by, you're talking about you know, people who are you know, in that 65 plus bracket now, uh, you know, have lived with the internet themselves for 30 plus years. So I think we are beginning to see that kind of tech literacy begin to kind of you know, generally increase across all formats, but voice in particular lends itself to being particularly, uh, you know, 
easy for for those of older generations to to get plugged into and also because these devices are so much cheaper you're not talking about you know spending 500 pound or a monthly contract on a on a smartphone or a, a th- you know at minimum a decent ipad you know costing you 300 plus you know pounds you're talking about something you can buy for 25 quid on prime day and at the moment you know in many cases the the manufacturer has been giving them away um you know google have you know given away massive amounts of nest speakers to spotify subscribers to get them to listen to music um amazon have been heavily discounting google um uh, sorry echo dots and, and those types of things so i think price points definitely had a major part to play in that as well mm. And I think the point you've just shared highlights is putting the customer's shoes on again. So putting actually the different target audience's shoes. And if I think back actually from the point you've just made, I bought my grandmother, my sister and I bought my grandmother one of those Alexas or series or whatever, I can't remember what it was now. And because like you say, it's it's not like giving her a laptop and say, you know, here's the internet. She could just talk to her. The, the, thing, the thing that I remind myself fondly of is um, she couldn't remember um, Alexa's name. So she'd call it all sorts of things like, why is she not working? <laughs> Um, yeah. But she'd say, you know, and she um, she had a sight impediment, so she couldn't see. So actually, we thought actually that was really good for her to say, you know, what's the weather like outside today? Um, and I think they've actually shown an ad on that, haven't they? One of the platforms has shown yeah. an ad on that, a, a, um, a blind young girl, which I thought was just is thinking about how you can adapt to the audiences and, and how you make their lives or their everyday lives better, but then add value, isn't it? So. Very exactly and i think that this you know the, the future i think is that we one of the reasons why we've seen voice be so successful in the past couple of years and i think that it has a long way to go is that people are looking for a more human way of getting things done we, we've kind of reached peak screen <laughs> and we're looking for other ways of getting things done and so when we're talking to, to customers at vixen you know we're often saying you know the reason we believe in this is that because you know voice is the most human way of connecting with the internet and um we desperately need some more humanity back in our technology and i think that that's one of the the things that why we're so passionate about the potential that conversational interfaces have not just for commercial reasons but in healthcare particularly also in social care for the elderly and the vulnerable helping combat you know sensations of loneliness um and and helping aid people with you know kind of confusion and mental health issues you know particularly in, in dementia and alzheimer's care there are some really encouraging studies being carried out in all of those areas right now um and yeah, we're all looking for ways of, of, like I say, getting things done easier that uh, is less destructive and less distracting, and uh, and yeah, kind of keeps us um, yeah connected to the people around us without kind of being constantly heads down in a phone or or some other screen. As, as and yeah, the lockdown I think has only proven to us all that yeah that's become more vital, um, not because um, it was any less important when we were out and about and yeah having issues paying attention to one another when we were in person with one another you know distraction was a big issue we've now been using our screens so much to maintain connection over the past year um that you know whenever we're then not needing to be with others we'd much rather not have to be also staring down a a conference call line to get our, our social lives done and let alone the household chores so i think we definitely see that as we come out of the lockdown i think a lot of people have now been trained in the benefits of what voice can bring um and that they're not likely to go back on those those trends in the same way we've seen across you know adoption of e-commerce for example in general Mm. um but what we will see is that people begin to use this as a way of complementing their other digital activities as as we get back to some kind of normality yeah i think even if again you know i use a lot of my own analogies today but i think it just really brings to life like before covid i would have never done a facetime with anybody i'm like no no just uh, just voice is fine like on my phone yeah. um and then when we're into covid like it was always a zoom call or a facetime call with my parents now but much like you and i spend my life on zoom so i'm a zoom zombie by the end of the day so the last thing i want to do when i've been doing 12 14 hours and i'm trying to start christmas presents is then go online like i literally cannot look at a screen at the end of the day so Absolutely. voice is like what's a good idea present for a three-year-old who likes dinosaurs or what's this or what's that or you know what can i buy my mother it's it's thinking of again it's just putting the customer's shoes on which everyone who listens to this will know i'm a big fan of just putting the customer's shoes on but really thinking about the customer's stress points or pain points or how can you be more helpful to them absolutely that's that's what we think is, is the big opportunity and it's what customers are already doing 
Um, so yeah, I think the big challenge really is that those brands and businesses that have the answers to those questions as a you know, come full circle on this is to really think about what's the best way of answering them. You know, it might be optimize a web page. It might be build out some new content. It might be you know, make sure that there's some video that answers that. Or, or it might be build some kind of voice application that you know solves that problem for people but whatever it is um you know this is something that we definitely see is is now at scale um it's it's here to stay and it's something that you know cannot be ignored as we go into the new year because you know no matter what comes in terms of uh unlockings and uh um, you know kind of the virus uh, situation uh, this is something that people have now kind of trained themselves to do and uh, we can expect them to to continue to adopt it for the long haul yeah excellent okay well thank you so much for all of your time today james you've shared so many tips with people i think probably pencils would have run out with the amount of hints and tips you've shared and i've learned lots today as well um we will have added james's report into our um podcast or youtube notes so feel free to have a look at the report there it's definitely worth 10 minutes of your time it's very visual so you can read through it quickly and pull some great tips and hints from it and there's also some examples there there was a sport brand i think that was you know, like saying how they'd, they'd used it so some great insights there so thank you very much for listening listening and joining us today and we look forward to seeing you on another podcast or video soon thank you and thanks again once again james Thank you.